This time on Psychic Investigators. A wealthy businesswoman vanishes on a shopping trip to Tucson. We've seen a number of homicides, robberies, kidnappings. Is it kidnapping or something else? The police have their suspicions, but no proof. He was tall and handsome. He could talk snow off a snowflake, and he took over her life. A psychic warns the police to act fast. I just got a really, really bad feeling. Or the truth could stay buried forever. to the story that was about to unfold on December 13th, 2004. At 6 p.m., 67-year-old Ta Benderly frantically approaches the security desk at Park Place Mall. His partner is missing. He tells the guards he dropped Loretta Bowersock off at Dillard's department store at 2 o'clock and arranged to pick her up at 4. He's been looking for her for the last two hours. The police are called, and Detective Fabian Pacheco is put in charge of the case. Tucson, unfortunately, has seen its fair share of homicides, uh, robberies, kidnappings. We do take each and every one of those investigations seriously. Immediately, Pacheco recognizes the name of the missing woman. Loretta Bowersock and her daughter Terry own a successful chain of furniture stores. Their commercials have been on the air for 20 years. Thanks to you and Ma, Terry's consignment furniture has expanded again. Here's a beautiful Bernhardt sofa, and you saved $1,400. Police kicked the search into high gear. They had searched all of the uh, Dillard store to include the Park Place Mall, the surrounding uh, neighborhoods, without any success. At first, Pacheco wonders if Loretta may have been abducted for ransom. After all, she is a high-profile millionaire. Todd Benderly made some indications uh, regarding a possibility of Loretta being kidnapped by some individuals in a white van. And this information further heightened our uh, response to uh, this investigation. Todd calls Loretta's daughter in Phoenix. I jumped in my car and drove down to Tucson in 45 minutes, which is normally about an hour and a half. I just remember feeling very frantic. The fear of her being kidnapped was probably the worst for me. I started getting hold of all of the local newspaper because I'd been on the news a lot. And I got pictures of her off of uh, Ta's computer and we started making uh, posters right away. Terry and Loretta were like Arizona success story. We had watched them grow up on television. They started their business together, the consignment business. They were in our living rooms for 20 years. My mother was a very smart lady. She was very attractive, very talented, full of life. For 18 years, Loretta has shared that life with Ta Benderly. The story Ta tells police is that they left Tempe, the Phoenix suburb where they live, that morning for a five-day vacation. They checked into the Residence Inn in Tucson at 12.30 p.m. and went to the mall at 2 o'clock. Police check mall security cameras and make a startling discovery. We saw that uh, there was no Loretta to be found anywhere within that video. Does that mean there's something wrong with Ta's story? Ta said he searched for Loretta in the mall for two hours. The video surveillance actually shows them coming into the Dillard's department store and almost immediately going straight to the customer service counter and reporting her uh, as a missing person. Police get a search warrant for Ta's hotel room and ask Terry to look through her mother's belongings. There was um, a lot of stuff all over the bed that he had taken down, uh, guns and ammunition taken from my mother's house. There was a lot of valuables there. But I think probably the most crucial moment was when I saw the jewelry. That probably was the first moment where I 
thought this wasn't just kidnapping, this was something else. But what? Police search his vehicle and make an incriminating find. A shovel and a pickaxe. Those are red flags right away, especially looking at these tools that look like uh, they have dirt and dust on them like they've been used. Detective Pacheco contacts the police in Tempe. They get a warrant to search Ta and Lorena's home. And in the garage, another disturbing find. Detective Trent Luckow is with the Tempe police. They found a van parked there, and in the back of the van, they found um, a purse. And inside that purse, they, there were credit cards and a checkbook and ID uh, that all came back to uh, Loretta Bowersock. The purse, the pickaxe, the valuables, it all points to foul play. Based on the evidence that we had, we were confident that Loretta had never made it to Tucson. Tucson police bring Ta in for questioning. He's defensive and, curiously, unconcerned about his missing partner. You need to respect the fact that I'm trying to give you information in as clear a form as I can. I, I was not prepared to um, have to account minute for minute right. for my time. So Plain and simple is she never made it down here. This whole thing is going to come down like a deck of cards. The police believe they have a murder on their hands, but without a body, they cannot lay charges. They let Tall Benderly go and put him under surveillance. But Terry isn't content to just sit back and wait. She hears from a friend about a psychic Hello, who Marianne. might be able to help. Yes. Credentials and her own radio program. I'm clairvoyant, clairaudient, which means I talk to those on the other side. The capability of like jumping time with my mind, like look at everything on a, on a TV screen and it plays out in front of me. Terry calls Marianne at her home in Bethany, Oklahoma. It's never easy when you tell somebody that somebody that they love has crossed over especially when they've been murdered. Arizona businesswoman Loretta Bowersock has been missing for two days when a psychic shares a devastating vision with the woman's daughter. Not only is she dead, she's been murdered. I think that it took a little while for me to get through, and it was hard to hear those things. Using her paranormal powers, Marianne Morgan claims to see Loretta's last moments. I kept getting all these visions of screaming and yelling in a fight. And then I saw somebody coming up from behind and putting something over somebody's head. Then I saw somebody suffocating, fighting. To, to save their life. And the more she fought, the worse it was. And, and then eventually, there was just no life at all. Then, the killer appears before the psychic. When I started seeing this man, I described him in depth and in detail to Terry. And she said, yes, this is the person that her mother had been involved with for a very long time. And I said, Terry, you don't know this man. This man has lied to you. He's got all kinds of money problems, all kinds of financial things that he's created. He's a con artist. And she understood that. However, she really didn't want to believe it. And there's another psychic bombshell for Terry. I saw Loretta Bowersock open the door and her be handed a set of papers and I saw how angry she got and I knew that the house was in foreclosure and and this was something that she had no idea about. And I said, that's crazy. There's no way that my mom would let her house go into foreclosure. She loved her house. Could the psychic be right? Terry decides to tell the police about the foreclosure. We don't use psychics. Uh, we're more into the 
modern forensics, uh, the DNA, the fingerprinting, uh, certain other things that we can do as, as homicide detectives. But psychics, uh, I'd never used one. I was skeptical. And I said, you know, I, all I know is there seem to be some things that she described that seemed to be accurate. And with us not having any leads coming in, I said it really couldn't hurt. We did a financial investigation, and that's where we realized this home was in foreclosure. Nobody knew that. That was uh, really astounding and began to think, well, maybe the psychic could be of service. In the meantime, the police continue to pull apart Taw's alibi. Taw says he and Loretta left Tempe at 10 a.m and checked into their Tucson hotel at 12.30. However, the desk clerk says he checked in at 2.48, alone. And his credit card and bank receipts also tell a different story. At 11 a.m., he used his credit card to buy two baseball caps at the outlet mall. And at 1.15, he bought two sandwiches at the truck stop, just four miles down the highway. We are now faced with a two-hour block of time that we're trying to determine where exactly was he. And it's very important to us to uh, account for that time. Police think that during that time, Taw was busy burying Loretta's body somewhere in the Sonoran Desert. We were headed in the direction to prosecute Taw Benderly uh, for the murder of Loretta Bowersock. Then, an explosive turn of events. One week after Loretta's disappearance, the psychic has another revelation. All of a sudden, flash before me this vision of Todd Benderly. And I just got a really, really bad feeling. Either this man's going to kill himself or he's going to try to escape. The net is tightening. All the evidence of Loretta's disappearance points to Taw Benderly. The psychic immediately calls Detective Pacheco. We were very concerned for Taw Benderly's welfare. Obviously, we don't want anyone to harm themselves. And most importantly, we still don't know where Loretta is. If something ever happens to Taw, uh, the chances of finding Loretta are gone along with him. Insistence, the police check up on Tom. He seems fine. The next day, Terry calls Tom several times, but he doesn't answer. In a panic, she contacts the police. At that point, police probably need to go out there and make sure that he's he's okay and that he's fine, or that he had not fled. entered the house. They found Ta hanging from an extension cord in the garage. All Ta Benderly left was a suicide note saying he is gone to join Loretta, but nothing about how she died or where her body is located. What a coward. Not only did this man kill himself, he took all the clues with him on where Loretta was. He never said, here's what I did, and here's where she is. This SOB went to hell not telling anybody where Loretta was. The psychic was dead right about Taw's suicide. But can she help to find Loretta Bowersock? Taw Benderly has taken the secret of Loretta Bowersock's burial place with him to the grave. Knowing that he had just committed suicide, uh, I lost all the hope of finding out really what happened, if he'd been the one that killed her, and where was she? When I found out that Todd Benderly had committed suicide, I was thinking about what Mary Ann had told me. I was thinking, what else could we have done? Once the, the main suspect is dead, uh, there's nobody to prosecute, the case is closed, the only thing left in this investigation to do is to find the remains of Loretta. But where is she? Three weeks.
weeks after her disappearance, the police are no closer to finding her body. I needed to know what had happened. You know, how was she killed? Was she shot? Was she cut up? Had he bashed her? When you don't have how somebody died, it just makes you crazy. Desperate, Terry invites psychic Marianne Morgan to Tempe. Maybe she can see something the police have missed. They start in the place where Todd took his own life, the garage of Loretta and Todd's soon-to-be repossessed house. We went out to the garage. A very, very cold entity came to be present with us. I said, Terry, Taw's here in the garage with us. And about that time, he jumped into my mind, and he starts screaming. He says, she's in the desert. She's in the desert. I told you she's in the desert. It was just very powerful and overwhelming. I knew this was going to be very hard to tell Terry. But unfortunately, I saw her mother wrapped in plastic, almost mummified. And I saw her buried in a very shallow grave. The desert, a likely place to dump a body. Police already suspect Ta has buried Loretta in the Sonoran. But the psychic sees specific, unique details. I could see that there was blue. I felt like I was surrounded with blue. And then I heard children laughing. And I could see and I could hear children going around and around on a merry-go-round. So I thought, oh my gosh, that's going to be the, the biggest, one of the biggest keys to this is that she is not even 150 yards from this merry-go-round. A merry-go-round, the color blue. Marianne shares the details with the police, who have a lead of their own. Tom made a cell phone call around the time police think Loretta was buried. Detective Landon Rankin of the Pinal County Sheriff's Office led the search for Loretta Bowersalk. Mr. Benderley's cell phone had pinged on a certain cell phone tower in central Arizona in our jurisdiction of Pinal County. The cell phone records show Ta had made a phone call at 12.30 in the Sonoran Desert, 94 miles from the hotel in Tucson, where he told police he was. And he had made that call during the two-hour time gap that he couldn't account for. I believe it was his dentist had called. So Mr. Benderley opened up his cell phone, returned the phone call. So that basically put his footprint in our area. The police think Ta was burying Loretta's body in this area of the desert. But even with hundreds of volunteers, they're looking for a needle in a vast haystack. People who ask the question, how hard is it to find a body in the desert have never been to the desert. The desert is so enormous. I mean, even with clues, you can't find a body in the desert. Six months pass, and there's no sign of Loretta. With limited resources, the police halt the search. But Terry Bowersock refuses to give up. For the next few months, each Saturday, locals and tourists alike scour the desert for Loretta Bowersock's body. Every day that I'd be out searching, I remember I would just think of her and just how important it was not to spend the rest of my life wondering. I wasn't about to let her stay in the desert. That wasn't going to happen. I was going to find her. Terry was searching every day. I finally just had to tell her that it was not her karma to find the body, that hikers were going to be in the desert about a year later from the time that she disappeared, and that they would come upon the body. In January 2006, just 150 feet from an abandoned motel, a family out hiking stumbles on a human skull. Dental records confirm these are the remains of Loretta Bowersaw. The teeth that I had noticed had, had fillings. More specifically, was I, I saw some porcelain veneers on her, sort of her front teeth. When I was told that she was finally found, it was like, oh, thank God. It was a relief to know, you know, I could stop chasing. 
I did need to have closure. It was amazing when I drove out there, there was a blue motel. It's like when you got there, you went, how do we not see this much blue somewhere? But we stopped just short of that, five miles you know, before that area. An autopsy reveals the actual cause of death, asphyxiation by a plastic bag. When I was first at scene and saw, and saw the, the plastic, I thought it might have been just skin. But we went to the autopsy, and it saw that the plastic bag was completely over her head. It came full circle with Mary Ann's prediction. It was exactly as she had said. The police reconstruct Loretta's last hours alive. On December 13th, Loretta discovers the foreclosure notice on the house. At 3.33, she makes the first of 17 phone calls to the bank. They confirm her worst fears. Her partner of 18 years has been embezzling the mortgage payments. When she confronts Todd, he panics, fearing his web of lies is about to be exposed. He sneaks up behind her, places a plastic bag over her head, and suffocates her, just as the psychic predicted. After being involved in this case, I can say that definitely I'm less skeptical of uh, employing the services of a psychic. I have never used a psychic until this, but the information she gave was pinpoint accurate. A psychic gives us insights that we don't have. When this case came to a close and I got the phone call that they had found Loretta Bowersock, it was just a sigh of relief that, that uh, it was finally over. Ta Benderly was never tried for the murder of Loretta Bowersock. A dead man can't be put on trial. I felt so bad that I hadn't done something, you know, to rescue her. I hadn't taken her out of the house earlier. I've learned there's a lot of women out there that are lonely and desperate for love. And that, unfortunately, there's men that will take advantage of that. And so I would just simply say to women, if you feel like there's something wrong with the person you're with and you haven't checked them out, uh, do.